Hi right, guys, just doing a quick video to show my tap and die holder for the lathe. Yeah, it's turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Works well. And as you can see, it just um, just slides back and forth like that. The the thing I like about having this set up, you can actually lock down the tail stock, so it's totally rigid. It's not going to move on you. So. And then this section here moves. Otherwise, you've got to loosen your, you got to loosen the tail stock so it can move freely. But the problem with that is, if it grabs, you can actually tilt the whole tail stock. But having it rigid, it's not going to go anywhere. And so all the movement is done here. Okay, I'll just I'll get it quickly set up. I'll show you how I cut a thread with it, and then um, and then later. Once I've shown you this, how this thing works, I'll put it on the bench, pull it apart, show you how I made it. Okay, I'll be with you in a sec. I'm just about ready, guys. Um, I just thought I'd quickly show you how I'm going to be turning my spindle. I'll be doing it manually. I'll be using my uh, a handle. Uh, I've, I've made this mandrel that clamps up into my spindle. And um, the handle, when I go to use it manually, I just put the handle on. It's just got a couple of pins there that drives the actual mandrel. So all I do is put the handle in like that. Now I can turn my spindle manually. And then while I'm not using the handle, I usually just leave it in there. It doesn't get in the way unless I've got some long stock. I've just got to remove it, but otherwise it just stays in there. I'll turn the lathe on and um, I'll just show you how it just, it just spins fine. So yeah, that that works pretty good. But that's probably for a different video to show you how I actually made that. But anyway, um, I'll get back to cutting this thread, and um, I'll just get the camera all set up, and then and then we'll we'll, we'll cut this thread. Okay, we're all ready to go. I'm about to cut um, a 10 mil thread onto onto some mild steel rod. I've already turned it down to 9.85 mil with a bit of a chamber just to get it started. So, okay, let's cut this thread. As you can see, the die holder is sliding as the thread's being cut. backwards, clean up some of those chips, but yeah, cutting threads is quite simple now, and um, my die holder works really well. I made it long enough, so I can actually do a, a 200 mil thread. I've got this here, slides, I think it's about 100 mil, and then there's also drill the actual arbor here is drilled out about 120 mil. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Works great. It's a lot easier doing it this way than the way I was doing it before. So let's just say I was getting too close to the end of its travel. What you do, you slide it along, loosen off the tail stock, and slide in the tail stock, like that. Clamp it back down again, then keep going. So that was the idea while there's so much length in this. 
It was just in case I wanted to cut some long threads. So I think you get the idea of it. What I'll do next, I'll show you how the um, tap holder attachment works. I just went and got a 10 mil bolt, a nut, sorry. Let's put the nut on it. Pretty good, I'm really happy with it. A lot easy cutting threads now. Okay, I'll just go set it up for the uh, taps. Okay, she's uh, all ready now to do the uh, internal thread uh, using the tap. As you can see, I'm using a um, self-centering four jaw chuck to hold the taps. Um, works really well. Um, it's 80 mil diameter chuck. Didn't need to be that big. I was thinking about getting a smaller one I saw on eBay hummed and hard about it but at the end of the day it's only got to clear the cross slide which it does easily and I thought with an 80 mil you just never know you know you can I could have other uses uh, for the chuck instead of just using it purely just for doing the tapping on the lathe so yeah I went with the 80 mil got it for a really good price hundred dollars delivered which is pretty good price it's pretty good quality chuck when I first got it, it did have some birds and stuff and um it not having anything in there, but it slightly, there was a little bit of binding with the, with the actual jewels, but I just went over there with the tiny files and just cleaned it up. And now uh, she works really good. I'm really happy with that. But for the price that I paid, that's really good quality chuck. So I'm happy about that. Anyway, I just, I've got, a, I've got the material ready to, to be um, tapped, threaded. Um, it's just aluminium. Uh, I didn't have any mild steel lying around, but at the end of the day, this is purely just to so these guys get an idea to see it working. And um, that's for a 10 mil thread. Got the um, tap already. And um, as you can see, yeah, she's ready to go. So I'll set the camera up and um, I'll just show you real quick uh, cutting the thread. Okay, let's cut this thread. Like I said before, it's so much easier now cutting threads. Okay, so what I'll do, um, I'll take it over to the bench now and I'll pull it apart and I'll show you how I made it. I 
I'll just reset the camera up back in a sec. Okay, so there we go. There's the um, there's the parts there on the bench. I'll just pull it apart. Just uh, first of all, get this tap out. So both these pieces, like uh, the chuck and the die holders, they're both um, clamped on to the sleeve just with two grub screws at 90 degrees. So just undo that, undo that, and that comes out. And um, yeah, so that's what that is there. That, that's as easy as it is, like two bolts comes off. So you can put that down, and if I wanted to, I want to do some dot, put uh, cut some threads with some dies. It's as easy as easy as that. And tighten them in there now. So that's what I like about the unit. It's uh, real easy, versatile, and just say so later on down the track, this die holder is only for tiny little dies, and I've got something a bit bigger. All I've got to do is just make another one of these instead of having to make this whole section here as well. All I've got to do is just make one of these and bolt it back up onto that. So that's what I like about it. Um, but anyway, I'll just pull this apart and this is what that thumb screw was like. While I'm, I've got it out of the tailstock, it's not going to play around and move around on me. Like if that was loose, it just it, it just it acts like a sliding hammer. And I, like I said, I don't want to damage this guide pin here. So I just tighten that up. And now it's it's really good. It just keeps it steady. Okay, I just um. Pull this apart that there i use the square bolt there because i use that on my quick change tool post i just want to keep things simple by using the same tools so i use that to unscrew it and my um that's the little bolt that i made and by taking that bolt out now this is free to come off so that's that piece there. That's uh, quite simple. And uh, there's the uh, main piece there. I had to. That's a, a Morse taper three taper to go into my um, tailstock. And like I said earlier, I, I drilled that out about 120 mil, so I could do some long thread bar with that. So that's it there, they're the pieces there. That's all there is to it. And um, this chuck, this chuck here, all I had to do was just make this mounting bracket, this mounting plate, and I'll just take that off real quick. Overall, it was a pretty good project. I enjoyed working on it. And not only that, um, because I was doing so many threads without this setup, it was a bit of a pain. It was, it was you know, just awkward, a little bit awkward, whatever. Now with this system here, it's going to be a lot easier cutting threads. So that's that piece there. This is how the chuck came with um, with the four M6 mounting holes. And um, that's all I had to make. So here's that little recess gets the um, gets it centered. And then on this side, 
Just had to bore that out to get it so it was a nice, a nice sliding fit. Just get the grub screw out of the way. So yeah, I made that with just a, a nice, neat, nice, neat. <clears throat> Typical, well, on the camera, had to be, had to bind up on me, but. There you go. It's, it's a nice snug fit. So that's it guys, so there's the pieces that I had to make. There's that, that for the chuck, and this for the dice. Just get that into the camera for you. The little bolt, little thumb screw. And then of course this piece. I was really happy with the, um, the, the, the M3 taper, Morse taper three on that um i made that um by using the offset on the tail stock i got i used the maps that um off the internet i was watching um what's his name pragmatic pete he he did one in uh, by using the offset on the tail stock and uh, and i used his maths and it worked out really well so anyway guys, um, if you've got any comments just leave them down at the bottom, happy to, to read through it and, and always reply to them and, um, and if this helps anybody out, because they were looking at making their own um, tap and die holder then, then yeah, uh, this might have given you some ideas. Okay, okay see ya.